Speed. Accuracy. Consistency. Concentration. These are the cornerstones of success in what is now the most prestigious pistol competition in the world. The National Rifle Association's National Action Pistol Championship, also known as the NRA Yankee Cup. I'm Lenny McGill, and welcome to Columbia, Missouri, and the Ray Chapman Academy of Practical Shooting, which for the past 14 years has been the home of the National Rifle Association's Action Pistol Championship, which is also known as the NRA Bianchi Cup. This event is a test of speed, accuracy, and consistency, as each competitor shoots 192 rounds over three days at a bullseye that's just four inches in diameter and at distances out to 50 yards. Now, here's Jim Davis, the director of the NRA's Action Shooting Program. We're, we're promising a very exciting week of competition here. We have over 200 shooters from all around the world competing for over $200,000 in uh, cash and prizes, with $10,000 going to the national champion. We have seven matches going, four of which will go for the national title, and it's going to be an extremely difficult uh, competition because we have eight or ten people who are easily uh, poised to take the title, so it's going to come down to the wire at the very last minute, which is going to promise for some real exciting shooting here. Now, don't go away, because coming up, we'll show you how you can get involved in action shooting. Plus, the competition Ready? begins at the barricade event when the NRA Bianchi Cup returns. The NRA Bianchi Cup is being brought to you by Colt Manufacturing, Lock Firearms, Mail Order Video, National Shooting Sports Foundation, Tasco Optics, Winchester, and the National Rifle Association of America. Welcome back to the NRA Yankee Cup. Our first shooter is up at the Tasco Barricade event. She's from Canada. Here's Lorna Pavelka at the 10 yard line where she has five seconds to fire six shots. Lorna is a former NRA Bianchi Cup Women's Champion. She won the women's title in 1990. Earlier, I talked with her about match nerves and how it affects her overall performance. And I didn't want to get panicky. And I think I did that. Is that a big problem, getting panicky? Before a match like this, yes. It can happen. We get excited. Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun to come here. It's, it's the most fun we have at a match in the year. And we always enjoy coming. Lorna completes the Tasco Barricade event with a perfect score, 480 points and 39 inches. Now, next up over at the Moving Target event is Kelly Gilmore. <laughs> Kelly is the brother of Riley Gilmore, and he's also a member of Team Tasco. Kelly's clean up to now. He's got a perfect score in all three events, uh, the practical, the barricades, and the falling plates. With a good score here, with a perfect score here, he could really be close to winning this event. Kelly's come close to winning this event several times. He's one of the more consistent shooters at the Bianchi Cup. Uh-oh, dropped two points out there. And I don't think you can see it there, but I think you saw it as it went through. So that puts him two points down at this point. Here he is at the 20-yard line. Now you can see he's turning a knob on his scope. He's not turning the scope on and off. What in fact he is doing is adjusting the lead that is built into the scope for when the target moves from left to right or right to left.
And you see he turned it there again. This is an innovation that was developed by his brother Riley for the Tasco scopes and specifically for the moving target at the NRA Bianchi Cup. Now Kelly's going to go on to finish 12th in this year's championship. He'll have an overall score of 1,914 points with 170 X's. So you'll see that he drops all of his points, all six points that he drops, he drops right here at the moving target event. He's got two more passes here. And there's the uh, shots he's got outside of that 10 ring for four more shots there. So Kelly Gilmore finishes up the mail order video moving target event with 474 points and 39 X's for a total of 1,914 points and 170 X's. Now here's local boy done good. It's Ed Deacon who's from Columbia, Missouri at the Falling Plate event. Three. Okay, you've been shooting the Bianchi Cup for how many years? 13. What brings you back? constant knowledge that if I don't clean this thing, I'm going to be trapped coming back again and again like an endless curse. Other than that, I enjoy the people, the camaraderie, and the competition is uh, just incredible. It's such an incredible pressure boiler, and being able to manage that and uh, hopefully progressively do better every year is uh, a good growth experience for me in many ways. Ed kind of sums it up right there. If you can manage the pressure, if you can manage the pressure of the competition and learn how to handle it within yourself, well, that's the essence of competition shooting. Deacon's one of a handful of shooters who's using an automatic pistol, a semi-automatic pistol. He, uh, along with Doug Koenig and a couple of the other top shooters, Ready? have switched to the automatic okay. after a lot of the shooters went to revolvers. Now, if you remember, if you look back in the Bianchi Cup history, Mickey Fowler started out really with an automatic pistol and won the event. And then Brian Enos came in with a revolver in 1983 and won. And most of the shooters, Ready? in fact, all of them basically, switched over to revolvers. Well, now more and more shooters are shooting automatic pistols, and hence I would think in the future you'll see a lot more shooters competing here at the Bianchi Cup with semi-automatic pistols. Now, Ed Deacon finishes up the falling plate event with 480 points and a perfect score of 48 X. Six left, one right. Next up is Janina Tennis. Janina is from Australia, and she's the returning women's champion. Last year, she was the overall high women's scorer. She's shooting at the practical event, and I had a chance to talk to her about the Bianchi Cup. Uh, well, you've traveled all the way from Australia for the Bianchi Cup. What brings you back? Well, to defend my title, I suppose. <laughs> it's, um, I've had a bit of a bad start, but uh, I'll see how I do in the next two days. Next day. Well, do you, uh, what do you like most about the NRA Bianchi Cup competition? What, what's your favorite part about it? Not, not as far as the match, but the overall. Um, I suppose it's an international match. It's, it's got a lot of great shooters and um, I just enjoy coming here and it's fun. Well you won last year, um, how's it feel to be coming back as a returning champion? I feel a bit more pressured I suppose. Um, I thought I, I suppose I'm a bit disappointed too, I thought I could do a lot better than what I have done but um, I'm glad I'm back and I'll do my best. What do you think about women and uh, and competition shooting would you encourage other women to get involved and why um especially in nra in the bianchi cup because there's no disadvantage for women uh she can shoot exactly the same score as her male counterparts and um hopefully one day there'll be a outright women who wins <laughs> janina shooting now out at the 50 yard line She'll go on to finish up the 1992 NRA Yankee Cup with a total score of 1,895 points and 144 exits, which places her 51st overall out of a total of 201 competitors. Not bad shooting for Janina Tennis. Now, let's switch over to the mail order video moving target event where Tomo Hasegawa has a chance to move in to first place. Tom, Tomo is one of eight competitors from Japan shooting in this year's championship. Now, it's interesting to note that in Japan, competition shooters cannot own real guns. So they come to the United States to practice and compete in the NRA Bianchi Cup.
Tomo Hasegawa needs to shoot all tens in order to take over first place. The NRA Bianchi Cup targets are scored according to where the shot hits. If the bullet hole is touching or inside the eight inch circle, the shot is scored as 10 points. The next scoring ring is 12 inches in diameter and scores eight points. Outside of that ring, scores five points and a miss, and of course, scores zero. The bullseye, or center of the target, is the X zone. It also scores 10 points. Now, here's Tomo Hasegawa at the 20 yard position. He shot an eight on that last pass, so that's going to block his attempt to move into first place. Tomo Hasegawa, who's from Japan, goes on to score 473 points with 29 X's at the Mail Order Video Moving Target event. Right now, Riley Gilmore is up at the Tasco Barricade event. Gilmore is the returning champion. He won the cup in 1986 and last year in 1991. Here he is at the 25-yard line where he has seven seconds to fire six rounds. Riley Gilmore is one of the most consistent action shooters in the world. He's the captain of Team Tasco, and he knows what it takes to win this competition. I asked Riley what it was like to be the returning champion. I shot the best score I've ever shot here last year, and so I've uh, pretty much tried to, you know, do everything the same that I did last year. I haven't changed the gun or the holster or the ammunition or anything and tried to duplicate what I did last year, so maybe I am just a tad bit superstitious. You know. Stand by! Ready? Gilmore gets through the Tesco Barricade event with another perfect score. 480 points and 47 X's. Lenny? Right now over at the NRA Practical event, John Pride is taking care of business as usual. He's won the championship two times, once in 1987 and again in 1988. He knows how nice it is to win that $10,000 top prize. Pride is a member of the Los Angeles Police Department, and he's the father of two young children. Now he's shooting from the 50-yard line. Six more tens, and he's got a perfect score and the overall lead. John Pride finishes up with an excellent score, 480 points and 40 X's. Nice shooting for John Pride. Now, let's take a look at the Colt unsupported match where Vance Smith is testing the course of fire. In this event, all of the shooters use an off-the-shelf new factory Colt 1911 A1 45 caliber pistol. Lenny McGill talked with Van Smith about the event and shooting the new Colt pistol. Lenny? Is this difficult? Uh, what were you doing down here? Yes, it is. It's uh, because you're, you're shooting an unfamiliar gun, a gun you've never felt before. They let you warm up a little bit, uh, trigger, try the trigger on it. And uh, it's just all my guns are, you know, tricked out competition guns. And to shoot a, a stock gun like this, uh, it, it's hard. It's rough. Vance goes on to finish up the Colt unsupported match with a score of 389 points with eight X's out of a possible score of 480 points. Ready? Doug Koenig is now shooting the Winchester Falling Plate event. Koenig, who is from Pennsylvania, is one of a handful of full-time paid professional shooters. He's a member of Team Springfield Armory, and he makes his living shooting in competition events like this one. And that's not a bad way to go. Doug won close to $30,000 at the 1991 Masters competition, plus a lot more at shooting competitions around the country. Not to mention the $50,000 in sponsorship money that he takes home each year. Doug Koenig is on a roll today. With that run, he'll clean the Winchester Falling Plate event with 48 plates in a row. And that puts him in a four-way tie for the lead. So we've got a four-way tie for first place with Riley Gilmore, John Pride, Mario DiPaolo, and Doug Koenig. Coming up, the youngest competitor at this year's competition and speed shooting at the National Shooting Sports Foundation jackpot shoot when the NRA Bianchi Cup continues.
welcome back to the National Rifle Association's National Action Pistol Championship in Columbia, Missouri. The best pistol shooters in the world have come together to compete for over $200,000 in cash and prizes. Our next shooter is Judy Woolley, up now at the Winchester Falling Plate event. Judy is a member of Team Smith & Wesson. She shoots all year round and gets paid more than $50,000 a year to shoot and compete. Ready? Judy Woolley is one of the best women pistol shooters in the world. She completes the Winchester Falling Plate event with a perfect score, 480 points. Right now, here's Lenny McGill at the National Shooting Sports Foundation's Jackpot Shoot. Thanks, Tom. This event is a test of pure speed, and it's a lot of fun, too. At the sound of the tone, the shooter draws and shoots the five knockdown steel bowling pins. You can fire as many shots as you like, but the fastest time wins. Four, zero, three. Our first shooter is Jim Griggs. He's been shooting competition pistol and shotgun for the past eight years. Ready? Four, two, eight. Ready? I asked Jim what he likes Three, most about four, competition one. shooting. Uh, I like the people that are involved in it. I like shooting. I like the sport. It gives me a good gauge of uh, the war against myself within. It's one of the most mental games around other than golf. And I don't play golf. Ready? Jim Griggs blazes three, through the National three, Shooting one. Sports Foundation's jackpot shoot with a combined time of 10.32 seconds. Now let's switch over to the barricade event with Yoko Shimomura. Yoko was the top female competitor in 1990 here at the NRA Cup. Don't you just love those glasses? Not a bad looking target. She's shooting very well here this year. She's got all tens up to now. She'll go on to finish the NRA Bianchi Cup with a total score of 1,868 points and 129 X's. And that places her 93rd in the overall standings. She finishes the Tasco Barricade event with 475 points and 34 X's. Stand by. Next up is Kay Clark, who's from Keithsville, Louisiana. Hey. She's shooting at the NRA Practical event. Hey. What do you like most about the NRA Bianchi Cup competition? Uh, it's a little more, uh, uh, there's more women here than just about any match you go to. One thing makes it a little more fun to shoot against the other women. And uh, same courses of fire. I don't know if I actually like that over the same courses of fire every year, but it lets you pace yourself on, you know, I can tell what I, if I've I'm, I'm improved over the last four years. I like at Ipsic, you know, everything's a little different, so. Well, but now you're a competition shooter. You've been shooting competition for several years. Uh, what do you like most about competition shooting? I like it. The rush. <laughs> get a little adrenaline rush here at, as you get up on the line. I might be yawning, you know, right before I get there, but then you get a little rush going. And uh, just the excitement of it. It's fun. Okay, so you're, you're still competitive. You really look good. Uh, what's, uh, what's on your mind? How are you going to approach these next two events? Uh, these two are over. I look at, try to look at each one as a different match. So now I've got the mover matching neck, and that's all I've got. I don't even think about the plates until you step up there. And one shot at a time. Kay Clark will finish up the practical event with 474 points and 31 X's for a total score of 1,895 points and 139 X's. Now, here's Don Golombiski. He's up at the moving target event, the mail order video moving target event. Let's see how it is at the 10 yard line.
Don's a uh, very active competitive shooter. He shoots IPSC, he shoots the Steel Challenge, and of course he's here at the NRA Bianchi Cup. I understand he's also made an appearance at the Masters event. Don has cleaned the practical event, he's cleaned the Tasco barricade event, and he's cleaned the Winchester falling plate event. The big question is, what can he do here at the mail order video moving target event? With a clean score here, he could actually win the overall championship. Back now at the 20-yard line. Three shots in six seconds. And it looks like he's got them all in there so far. Don's shooting at the upper range at the Chapman Academy. This is up from the main range. This is a second moving target uh, stage that he's got installed on his shooting facility. Don goes on to drop nine points here at the moving target event. This is, of course, the most challenging event in the whole championship. That's going to give him a score of 471 points and 35 X's. You can see right there, he's got a couple out uh, into the eight ring there, so he dropped four points on that last pass alone. Uh, his total score for the overall match is 1,911 points and 166 X's, which placed him 19th overall in the 1992 NRA Bianchi Cup. Thank you, Don. Thank you. Good luck for us now, here's a name you'll all recognize. It's Ichiro Nagata, who is a world-class, world-famous photographer shooting the falling plates at 20 yards. Ready? Nagata's been shooting the NRA Bianchi Cup for many years. He's a very accomplished shooter, finishing the top 20, oh, probably six or seven times that I've seen him. Ready? Ichiro missed the plate at the 10-yard line this year, Stand by. so he's uh, got a 470-point total gone Ready? with a clean run here. And he cleans that last pass, but he does finish up with 470 points and 47 X's with a total score overall of 1,885 points and 139 X's, which placed him 66th overall in the 1992 NRA Bianchi Cup. Now over at the Tasco Barricade event, here's the only three-time winner of the Bianchi Cup, Mickey Fowler, who won in 1980, 1981, and 1982, in fact, before the invention of electronic optic sights. Uh, here you've been involved in the Cup now for the past 14 years, I guess, right? And uh, you're a three-time winner. Uh, what's it going to take to win the 1992 Bianchi Cup? Oh, uh, probably a 1920 with... Uh you know, it might be one or two 1920s, who knows. But, or it might be a 1918, nobody knows, you know. People put a lot of pressure on themselves by shooting super high scores early, you know. It, uh, some are able to handle it and some aren't, so anything can happen, but it'll probably take a 1920. So. Do you see that the competition is not only getting better, but these shooters are becoming deeper in their skill level? There's many more shooters who are... Who are yeah, it's basically the same guys to beat every year so far, but the skill level in the middle of the field has come way up. So we, we have a, a, a much higher degree of skill, and equipment's much better than it used to be. Yeah. With the uh, electronic sights and uh, the, 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 all the gadgets on the guns for hanging on the barricade and bumper pads and all that kind of stuff, it's, uh, the equipment has really come a long ways. 
Mickey Fowler finishes up the Tasco Barricade event with 480 points and 41 X's for a total score of 1,916 points and 163 X's, which placed him in sixth place overall. And he'll take home a check for $1,250. Now, here's Alan Fulford at the practical event. Alan Fulford is a living legend in the shooting industry. In fact, his competition shooting sports. He has quite a list of credentials and allow me to read them for you. In 1971, he was the open team NRA national bullseye champion. In 1990, he's the NRA 22 bullseye champion. Four-time national civilian bullseye champion. He won the masters competition in 1987 and 1990. He's a member of a national civilian team championship team for 16 times. Uh, he set six national records for Bullseye, Hunter Pistol, and NRA Action Pistol. And he's a member of the NRA 2650 Club, which means you've scored over 2,650 points out of a possible, possible 2,700. And he is, of course, a life member of the NRA. Alan Fulford is a very fine gentleman, and he shoots very well. Here he is at the practical event. Let's see how he's doing. Alan Fulford will go on to finish the NRA Bianchi Cup with 1,910 points and 153 X's, which places him 21st overall out of 201 competitors. He finishes the NRA Practical Event with 480 points and 39 X's. Over at the Tasco Barricade event, Lenny McGill is with this year's youngest competitor, Mark Polanski, who came all the way from Germany to shoot at the NRA Bianchi Cup. One of the youngest competitors here at the 1992 Bianchi Cup is 14 year old Mark Polanski. Mark, what brings you to the 1992 Cup? Uh, it's very interesting, and I wanted to go to a big shoot like this and uh, just want to see what it was like. How's it feel to compete against uh, some of the greatest shooters in the world? Oh, it's like a pressure cooker. I mean, it really gets to you sometimes. At least it gets to me. Well, you're facing the barricades up next. Uh, what do you have in mind? How are you going to approach it? Uh, I'm going to try to shoot it as accurately as I can and see how it goes. This 14-year-old shows he can shoot in the big leagues. Mark Polanski competes the Tasco Barricade event with 458 points and 26 X's. Frank Glenn is over at the Mail Order Video Moving Target event. Glenn's been shooting at the NRA Bianchi Cup for more than six years, and this year he's shooting his best match ever. Frank Glenn is 49 years old and lives in Phoenix, Arizona. A good pass here could put him into first place with Koenig and DiPaolo. Here he is at the 15-yard line. Frank dropped a shot out into the aid ring on that last pass, so he finishes the mail order video moving target event with 474 points and 27 X's. NRA Action Shooting is one of the fastest growing shooting sports in the world today. Men, women, and children compete on an equal basis in a friendly competition that emphasizes gun safety, shooting accuracy, and self-improvement. For more information on how you can get involved in action shooting, contact the National Rifle Association at 1600 Rhode Island Avenue, Northwest, Washington, D.C., 20036. Okay, back at the Tasco Barricade event where Bruce Pyatt is shooting a rather unorthodox style. Bruce told me he goes low on the barricade because there's less sway down in the low position than there is at the top of the barricade. You can see he's shooting a semi-auto pistol and looks like it's working to me. They're all X's, all right in the middle of the target. Bruce is a law enforcement officer in New Jersey, 
and he won the Soldier of Fortune. He was the top shooter in the Soldier of Fortune three-gun match. Ready! Bruce Pyatt will go on to finish the NRA Bianchi Cup with 1,916 points and 158 Xs, which placed him eighth overall in the competition. In fact, uh, the little history on that, he cleans the practical, he cleans the barricades here at this event, he cleans the plates, and he drops four points on the moving target. Bruce Pyatt, eighth place overall in the 1992 NRA Bianchi Cup. Now, here's Brian Enos. You can see Brian is without his Smith & Wesson team shirt. He recently got laid off or cut by the team Smith & Wesson, and not anything to do with his shooting ability, really more of a budgetary cut. Enos won this event in 1983. He was the man who pioneered the use of revolvers here at the Bianchi Cup competition. Enos also made a mental error here. He dropped the plate, which was 10 points, so he had 470 on the plates. He cleaned the practical. He cleaned the barricade, and here at the mover, he'll drop just four points to finish up with a total score of 1,906 points and 156 Xs. That placed him 28th overall in this year's championship. And you can see right there where he dropped two points. Out here at the 25-yard line. This moving target event is the equalizer. And there's his score. 476 with 22 X's for Brian Enos from Mesa, Arizona. Now over at the barricade event, here's Hiroki Akamura, who's from Benicia, California, and he's a very close friend of Ichiro Nagata. You can see he's one of the many shooters with the customized gloves. He's missing that trigger finger. Gives him a little bit better dexterity on the trigger, but it does protect his hands here at the barricade again. Akamura goes on to finish this year's championship with a total score of 1,820 points and 111 Xs, which is 100 points off a perfect score. But it does place him 137th overall. He had big trouble at the uh, Tasco barricade event. You can see 469 points and 26 Xs. Now here's a guy who doesn't really need an introduction. It's Rob Latham at the practical event, the 10-yard line. I talked with him earlier about the moving target event and his success. Yeah, I was. Uh, I, I knew that only person in was clean, or in, only person in clean was Doug. Yeah. So I'm thinking, like, well, you know, there's an opportunity here to move up. I'm a little soft on X's from the other events, um, but that's my best event. Yeah. I mean, I've cleaned that for like four years in a row, where I haven't cleaned other stuff. So going in, I was real confident. 
and they got a good run at 10, 15, 20 is easy distance, and I saw that that was pretty tight, and they got to 25, and that's when it hit, and I was just getting kind of nervous and shaking, like, I need some X's. Yeah, and you, uh, you really appeared you had a lot of X's on the front three rates. I did. I was only down uh, four X's on the first three distances. Yeah. And uh, then at 25, I only shot five X's. I needed another, I don't know, I guess John. I needed five more, so I would have had to shoot a pretty studly score to get by him. Uh, but hey, you know, it's, I'm happy to be where I end up. You know? And Latham will end up with 478 points here at the practical event and a total score of 1,918 points, which places him in fourth place overall. Back to the shooting competition at the Glock Random Target event. In this event, the shooters all shoot the stock Glock Model 21 45 caliber pistol at a series of six plates that appear and disappear in random order. It looks a lot easier than it really is. So here's our very own Lenny McGill to give it a try. Ready? Not a bad score for his first time shooting at this event. Lenny Miguel completes the Glock Random Target event with a score of 240 points out of a possible 360. Now, let's switch back to the Tasco Barricade event, where Canadian shooter Mario DiPaolo is making a bid for first place. After shooting that Glock event, I have a lot more respect for these competitors. They really do make it look easy, but you have to consider that they shoot thousands and thousands of rounds in practice. And it looks like Mario DiPaolo is benefiting from all that practice. He's got a great score going here, Tom. This may be one of the best performances on the barricades yet. He shot all X's, and he's got just one run left at the 35-yard line. Excellent shooting by Mario. He shoots a perfect score, or 480 points, and he dropped just one X. So, he finishes with 47 Xs, an incredible performance. Okay, Tom, let me set this up. With that last run, Mario DiPaolo takes over first place. But up now at the Mail Order Video Moving Target event, Doug Koenig is shooting for the $10,000 first place check. If he shoots a perfect score, Mario will have to follow that up here at the Moving Target event with another perfect score to maintain his lead. Koenig is now at the 15-yard line. He'll shoot six shots at the target as it moves across range at a speed of 10 feet per second. Doug Koenig is holding it all together. He shot all tens there, so one more pass like that will really put the pressure on Mario DiPaolo. Koenig does it. A perfect score on the mail order video moving target event and a perfect score overall. Out of 192 shots fired, he placed all of them in the 10 ring for 1,920 points and 169 Xs. Well, the only shooter who can beat him is Mario DiPaolo. He's got to rise to the occasion and place all 48 shots in the 10 ring. Here he is at the first pass. Six shots in six seconds. Mario looks confident. All 10s on that pass. Now he's back at the 15-yard line. 
over the past three years, Mario DePaulo has been one of the more consistent shooters on the circuit. He is the Canadian National Action Pistol Shooting Champion, and I know he would love to bring home the NRA Bianchi Cup to Canada. Here he is now shooting from the 20-yard line. Mario throws a shot outside the 10 ring on that last pass, so he'll drop two points on the mail-order video moving target stage, which enables Doug Koenig to become the 1992 National Rifle Association's National Action Pistol Champion and the winner of more than $10,000 in cash and prizes. Lenny McGill now is down on the field with our champion, Doug Koenig. Okay, so you not only did it, but you did it with a semi-auto pistol this year. How's it feel to come back in 1992? Uh, feels real good. Um, I've had a little bit of trouble preparing for the match uh, this year. Uh, lack of time and uh, had a little trouble with the gun, getting it set up right, and uh, didn't get much practice, but... Uh, all paid off in the end. I, I really like the gun. I like the automatic. It's a lot easier for me to get out there and shoot, you know, when it matters, because it's what I shoot all year long. Coming up, a new world speed shooting record at the Colt Speed event when the NRIB Yankee Cup continues. The Colt Speed event is a favorite of competitors and spectators alike. Here, the shooters stand 10 yards from five knockdown steel targets. And at the tone, draw and shoot as fast as possible. The object is to knock down all plates. The center plates electronically stop the timer. So, the fastest to the center wins. Earlier in the women's shoot-off, Kay Clark defeated Lorna Pavelka with a new women's record of 2.61 seconds. And in the junior shoot-off, Chad Dietrich won top honors over Bradley Tate with a new junior record of 2.16 seconds. Okay, Tom, in the men's shoot-off, we're down to the top two shooters, and what a pair. Rob Latham is probably the best all-around pistol shooter in the world, and he faces a relatively new but very fast shooter, Arndt Meyer. They'll shoot the best out of five, and the winner takes home an additional $2,500 in cash. Both these guys live in Phoenix, Arizona. Rob Latham is a full-time professional shooter and the captain of Team Springfield Armory. And Art Meyer is shooting for Dylan Precision. Here they are at round two. Ready! Latham takes that run with a good time of 2.29 seconds. It's now tied one run to Latham and one run to Art Meyer. Wow, Latham shows why he is considered the world's best. That's a new world record time of 2.02 seconds. As we watch it in slow motion, remember, the time includes the draw and the five shots. And it's an incredible time of 2.02 seconds. Stand by. Ready? Archmire falls, so Latham takes the run with a time of 3.36 seconds and wins the Colts speed event along with a check for $2,500. Congratulations are in order for the 1992 champions. Junior champion Bradley Tate from Australia, the women's champion Lorna Pavelka, and the overall National Rifle Association's Action Pistol Champion for 1992, Doug Koenig, with a perfect score of 1,920 points and 169 X's. So from the Ray Chapman Academy of Practical Shooting in Columbia, Missouri, for the National Rifle Association's National Action Pistol Championship, I'm Lenny McGill. Thanks for watching and safe shooting. The NRA Bianchi Cup is being brought to you by Colt Manufacturing, Lock Firearms, Mail Order Video, National Shooting Sports Foundation, Tasco Optics, Winchester, and the National Rifle Association of America.